Uh, whenever I'm with him, I'm inspired because uh, he loves the nations, not just Israel. I see his heart. I've seen him pray for Muslims and Muslim converts with tear in his eyes, and I'm blessed by him. And I thank you and thank him for inviting me to share what God is doing in Iran. I pray you will be inspired and uh, you will uh, align your life with what God is doing so we can change the world and save, save the nations. Uh, that's what God is doing. Let me share a little bit about myself. Um, Joel talked about uh, me being a, a Muslim, Shiite Muslim. I was born in a, a Muslim family in Iran, and uh, I was pretty much devout until I was my teenage years. I said, well, what the religion teaches me is just to be good, and I'm good. S settle that. I don't need religion, uh, not just to do the rituals. That didn't mean anything for me. So. Um, I focused on studies. That's when after science and uh, get my degrees in science. But uh, when the revolution in 79 happened, I started thinking. I said, well, look at what Islam is doing. Islam is powerful. I have ignored it the last four or five years of my life. Islam has kicked out Shah, has defeated the superpower uh, USA, and um, Maybe, maybe I should devote my life to it. It's a real. When I was practicing it, it didn't give me any hope, any joy. It didn't ch never changed me from within. That's why I set it aside, is to just be a good person. But with the revolution, I started thinking, maybe I should go back and rededicate my life in serving Islam. Look what it is doing. But then I had this fight within myself. I said, well, yes, yes, it, it, is, it is defeating. USA, so it must be God behind it. But at the same time, it's not doing anything for me. My marriage was going towards divorce. My life was empty. I felt so empty. I had no joy, no peace. I said, so is it true or not, this Islam? So let, let me study. As a scientist, as a researcher, I said, I'm, I'm going to be objective, and I'm going to study Quran, and I'm going to study other books, and make a decision unbiased, unprejudiced. So I, I picked up by a, a, a Quran first, even though I was familiar with it. I said, I'm going to do it this time, very objective study. I read Quran. I said, God, you know my heart. I am sincerely searching for you, and I feel I'm an intelligent person. If I read Quran, and if you're there, uh, you will lead me to, to yourself. I want to experience you. So I read Quran objectively. I finished it one more time, and I realized still my heart is empty. Still I don't have answers. I said, well, this is, a, if the best religion, which is Islam, is like that, forget about Christianity. <laughs> I, was, I was in turmoil. On one hand, I was on the street saying, that's to America, that's to America, that's to America. Well, don't look at me that way. I'm saying, <laughs> I have repented since then, and I... Uh, now, now I sing God Bless America, okay? <laughs> on one hand, it was death to America. On one hand, this Islam is not doing me any good. So, reading Bible, I said, I have to get to the end of this. I read, started reading the Bible, I read the Genesis, and then I jumped to Matthew. When I started reading about Jesus in Matthew, things started happening. Who is this Jesus? He's not like a prophet. He's too proud to be a prophet. He doesn't give glory to Allah. I mean, he, they, they worship him, and he accepts worship. So I struggled for a few months, and eventually I said, if this is true, both cannot be true, Islam and Christianity, Quran and Bible, they contradict each other too much to bo for both to be true. So I, one day I said, Jesus, if you're there, I want to experience you. And that day, my life started changing. My marriage was saved. We, we got to our divorce date, and uh, we went to our pastor. I said, you know, we still have a lot of problems, even though we are believers, a couple months old. And uh, he said, I, I, we, we're going to get divorced. He said, really? He opened the verse and, and said, uh, it said, God hates divorce. I said, oh, oh, I haven't, heard, I haven't read that verse yet. <laughs> you know, I, in Islam, it's so easy to divorce your wife. Now, I have to be miserable the rest of my life. <laughs> what kind of Christianity is? But by faith, we stayed together. And it wasn't easy. God changed us, crushed me and my wife, and rebuilt us. 
and we are together serving. We have three kids, and the Lord has used us to bless many families because we stayed together and believed Him. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I started sharing the gospel. I, I was an engineer introvert into my own studies, but something in me said, you're too selfish if you don't share that with others. So even though it was hard for me, I was shy, I just started sharing with people, and most of them rejected it. But gradually, one by one, Muslims came to Christ. Started planting churches in California, then uh, satellite television opened up, and we went on and thousands. Even the first day we were there, uh, the switchboard was lit uh, by callers from Iran asking about Jesus. So since then, we have been on television, live programs, and satellite broadcasts into Iran. And the estimate is over, you know, several hundred people call us to receive Christ every month, which represented of several thousand who don't call us, but they come to Christ through television. I'm excited because, you know, as you look at ahead, you see trouble. You see horrible events coming up. At the same time, you see great things God is doing. I had Joel on our live program a couple months ago, and here, I just enjoy sitting with him a Jewish Christian and a Muslim background believer, Christian, loving Jews and Gentiles and sharing. Just us being on live television, people call to receive Christ. They said, you know, we see God's love in practice. I want to share more about what's happening in Iran. That's not what you hear on CNN. So this is, should be fresh and new for you because CNN uh, reports what man is doing, and I'm going to report to you what God is doing, okay? Iran, crisis for an opportunity, amen. When you look at Iran, the news tells us that there is a crisis coming through Iran, and it's not going to go away. Uh, Ezekiel 38, you know the end is war. When you look at Jeremiah 49, 34 to 39, the, I have that uh, parts of it on, on my slide. It says, I will send out the sword after them until I have consumed them. That's Jeremiah 49. When you read the prophecies about Iran, you see, you, you, you see two types of prophecies. One talks about the war, Iran attacking, and Iran being attacked. Many people being killed. Many Iranians die. Even Jeremiah 49, I will send out the sword after them until I have consumed them. Then you read uh, promises, like, I will set my throne in Elam. That's a great promise. Jesus doesn't say that until, uh, except Jerusalem. So, the, you know, what does it mean to set my throne in, in Elam? Elam is technically the land east of Euphrates. Euphrates is the border between Iran and Iraq. Or east of that is Iranian land. So what does it mean, I will set my throne? Is it just millions come to Christ? No. There are millions of believers in the U.S., but God cannot say, I have set my throne in, in the U.S. It's more than numbers. It's people who are experiencing Jesus and obeying Jesus in their personal lives, in their businesses, in their families. To be short, Iran is going to be a Christian country. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? A few? Who, who believes that? Good. Praise God. And if you don't believe that, it doesn't matter. God said it, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I see the, I see what, how God is moving, and it's going to happen in the future. When you look at the Bible, Iran is an example. When you look at the Bible, you see a principle. The principle is this. When there is calamity, when there is hardship, there is a blessing also. Don't forget, in the, during the end time events, there's going to be a great end time harvest. They come together. For example, Psalm 23, 5, it says, He has set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Table, by God, enemies. Enemies, tables. They, they come together. 1 Corinthians 16, 9, a wide door of ministry has been opened to me, but there are many adversaries. A wide door open, adversaries. If you see adversaries, there is a wide door open close by. Psalm 2, 8, 
rulers are united against the Lord. And then right there, God says, ask of me, I will give you nations. You know, when these things are happening and will happen, we as Christians not only should not be afraid, but we should look for opportunities to ask of God for nations, and he will give us nations in the midst of all these tribulations. That's what God is going to do. And Iran is one of the first fruits. Iran is an opportunity. It's the only government led by clergy for 30 years, 31 years now. Many countries, many Islamic countries, they're saying, oh, I wish my, my government was Islamic. If we were just Islamic, our problems will go away. And Iranians are telling them, hey, wait, wait, wait. No, we have tried this for 31 years, and it didn't work for us. There is unemployment, drugs, prostitution, suicide, corruption in Iran, and more and more Iranians are coming to conclusion. Many countries are saying, Islam is our, our answer, but Iranians are moving away from that, and they're saying, Islam is not the answer, Islam is the problem. When you look at the people on the streets of Tehran, last year you saw that, but crowds were there. You know, when they stand up against the government, I want you to understand this. Uh, the government is separate from people. The government of Iran is moving towards Ezekiel 38, that war, but the people of Iran are moving towards Jeremiah 49, 38, I will set my throne in Elam. The two movements at the same time in Iran. When you see these people on the streets, what are they saying? They're rejecting government, but you know, government and religion in Iran is the same. So when they're saying we don't want the government, they're saying we don't want the religion. We don't want Islam. They want something different. They want democracy, and they're hungry. Islam, that's why in our live programs, I never attack Islam. I don't need to. Just present Jesus. Because in their mind, they have already rejected Islam. They already know it, it's not working with them, for them. There's so much hunger. I can tell you many, many stories. Let me show you this. You know, when I came to Christ, there was a book out, 10 Muslims Find Christ. It was written by a missionary who gave his life 40 years of precious life in Iran to bring 10 Muslims to Christ. 10 Muslims in a lifetime. Then we had a phone call. I never forget that. It was reported to me that this, this man called. He said, I've been watching your program for many years, many months, and now I want to pray to receive Christ. Uh, by the way, I'm not alone. There are five families with me. We all have talked among ourselves. We want to pray to receive Christ. And I bought a speakerphone just for this purpose. So would you tell us how we can become a Christian? And here, a young man of 22 years old, in one phone call, leads 30 people to Christ. So you want a picture of Iran? What it was? Amen. Praise God. Don't forget this picture. This is the picture of Iran. What it was 10 in a lifetime. Now it is 30 in a phone call. That's, that's the picture. I was talking to some people uh, in Iran just a few weeks ago, and I asked him, what, how is it in Iran? They said, well, it, it's, it's dangerous for us Christians, but people are so hungry. They're, I, I said, I, I led just since January, I've led 40 people to Christ myself. And whoever I talk, they're, they're interested. They want to hear the gospel. And I asked the same person, uh, next person, they said the same thing. I asked the third person, and he said, you know, Pastor Moss? I said, what? He said, uh, I'm very frustrated. What? I mean, all these stories, you're frustrated. He said, you know, you gave us a course. You know, we have evangelism course, how to share the gospel with, you know, nice outline and beautiful illustrations. He said, I, I've taken that course, but I'm frustrated because whenever I want to share the gospel according to that course, they never let me finish. They're in the middle, they, they pray to receive Christ. I never get to use all these beautiful illustrations. All the beautiful examples you give, they come to, they, they in the middle say, we want to pray to receive Christ. <laughs> Isn't that a nice problem to have? That's Iran. That's Iran today. The work of the Holy Spirit, they're hungry. Now, how do we, you know, Islam is a spirit of fear and terror. It's just substance, not just to the West. People living in those countries are terrorized. There's fear everywhere. In Iran, there's fear. The government wants to stop, not just political movement, but spiritual movement in Iran through fear. 
Now, how do we stop that fear and overcome fear? 2 Timothy 1.7, let me share that strategy with you, anti-terror strategy. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. I'm going to uh, give you some examples of uh, practically how you're going to do that. Number one is love. I'm going to start with that because God says that's the greatest of all. And for spirit of fear, which is spirit of Islam, the greatest is to oppose that is love. If you watch our program, it's just loving people through the program and they come to Christ. And you know, 1 John 4.18 talks about perfect love casts out fear, casts out fear, right? Have you noticed the cast out is a spiritual warfare word? It is warfare. Fear is a spirit and with the perfect love that you have for God and for others, that's how you stop that spirit. If you're witnessing to Muslims, number one is, is love. Number one, not just your love. Let me share this with you. I'm a pastor for many years, and many people came to Christ in San Jose. And I ask them, how, how did you get attracted to Jesus? And they usually say, you know, love, that's the first thing. He said, the way we loved you. And many of them said yes, and many of them said no. He said, so, so what? What love? He said, the way you loved each other. He said, when you loved me, I was suspicious. He said, maybe you're just trying to get me to become a Christian. So, but when you Christians love one another, that I said, this is the truth. When you love your wife, the way, you know, Muslims who are interested in Christianity watch you very closely. They want to know if what you say you live. They're going to watch you, how you treat your children and your spouse. I know a pastor, one of our pastors, he said, he said, I was very interested. A missionary was witnessing to me. I was very interested in Christianity. But I, before I make a decision, I had to check him out bef so I won't be deceived. I said, I told him, I'm going to make food. I'm going to come and uh, spend the whole Saturday with you. He said, okay. I went uh, to, to his house, and all I wanted to watch how he talks to his wife and kids. He said, by Saturday afternoon, I said, I'm ready to receive Christ. Jesus is real because how you talk to your wife and your kids. Love is the greatest power to bring Muslims to Christ. Let, uh, let me share this uh, video with you. It's a, um, a caller from Iran. He says, he starts, I am a Shiite Muslim. That's how he starts. But then within a two, three, four minutes, he is praying to receive Christ. Let's watch that. <laughs> من دلم خیلی پره دلم خیلی گرفته همینجا از شما دو تا برادره عزیزم تقاضا میکنم تقاضا میکنم خیلی گرفت دارم خیلی گرفت دارم خیلی گرفت دارم برای من دعا کنیم همیشه من عشق از چشم میاد عشق خودم رو میچشم همیشه عشقام شوره ولی هر موقع چشم زیبای شما رو میبینم و از چشم عشق میاد با من دعا کنید بگید خداوندا تو را دوست دارم چون تو اول منو دوست داشتی خداوندا عاشقتم چون تو اول عاشق من بودی عیسی مسیح وارد قلب و زندگیم شو میخوام مثل تو باشم عیسی مسیح گناهان منو پاک کن عیسی مسیح, مسیح درت ها و قم های منو بردار عیسی مسیح درت ها و گناهان منو بردار زندگی تازه به من بده زندگی تازه به من بده عیسی مسیح هاللویا ق... قلب تازه به من بده قلب تازه به من بده من از امشب فرزند تو هستم من از امشب فرزند تو هستم و تو پدر آسمانی هستی <تصفيق> پدر من هستی پدر آسمانی پدر من هستی پدر آسمانی من هستی و دیگه تو رو بابا صدا میکنم و دیگه تو رو بابا صدا میکنم زندگی من مال توست زندگی من مال توست از امروز مال تو هستم از امروز مال تو هستم در نام عیسی مسیح و نام عیسی مسیح بله خدا رو شکر چه احساسی میکنی اوش اینجا خیلی خیلی این روح خداست که وارد قلب و زندگی تو شده از امشب فرزند خدا هست خیلی احساس پاکی میکنه
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, we have a presentation of the gospel called God is Love. If you have a Muslim friend, or if you yourself want to learn how to share the gospel, get that video. On our website, if you go, there is a picture of God is Love video, and many, many Muslims have come to Christ through that. It's a soft approach. Don't attack Islam. Don't insult Islam. And, uh, you know, you don't have to attack darkness. You just bring out the light, and that's enough. Amen. And let me share another thing. You know, these people coming to Christ, this was a miracle. People who work among Muslims know that a Muslim who comes to Christ, they usually are so afraid they want to hide their faith. And come, somebody coming on the, on the air and praying to receive Christ, that's just the work of the Holy Spirit. That's supernatural. That by itself is a miracle. And not just the easy believers, their lives are in danger. And when they come to Christ, that's another miracle. When they come to Christ without a church, without a pastor, their lives are so transformed that people around them notice. You know, I've been a pastor in the U.S. many years. You know, you have all these classes, you work, you discipleship, and you work, you know, work on 20 people for two years. Maybe a few of them really have a, uh, experienced a life transformation. But the supernatural work of God in Iran, without the church, without pastors, people's lives are transformed. Of course, they watch television, they get the Word of God, they get the Bible, but God is doing a miracle's work. But, you know, I remember a, a lady called us uh, and after the program. He, she said, yeah, three months ago, I came to Christ, and my life was changed dramatically. I know what kind of horrible person I was. I was beating up my children. I was fighting with my husband, and it just a hard pl uh, person to live, uh, to live with. So, but I came to Christ, and my life has changed. I have peace. I have joy. I have a good relationship with my husband. I have, I have a good relationship with my children. I said, hey, lady, that's a great, great testimony. Do you share that with others? He, she said, no. He said, no? Why not? She said, I don't need to. Why don't you need to? She said, because my husband does for me. <laughs> she said, my husband is not yet Christian, but he goes around. And he tells his friends and family members, he said, hey, guys, hey, guys, let me, let me share with you. If you have marriage problem, if you have family problem, this is what you do. You get a satellite dish, you tune it to Christian programming, and you make your wife watch it because it's going to work. <laughs> Jesus is changing lives. He has the power to change lives. That's a, that's a second strategy. It, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power. Jesus is powerful. He's appearing to Muslims. If, wherever I go, I get with Muslims, background believers, I usually get a survey. Always, over 70% of them either have seen Jesus' vision, dreams, or a miracle. It seems that these days, you know, I'm jealous. It seems that Jesus is running a special for Muslims these days, huh? <laughs> Just the, the, He is appearing to them. He's leading them. This uh, man called. He said, I want to pray to receive Christ. How, how long? He said, I bought my dish last week. He said, one week, Muslim come to Christ. Maybe he's emotional. Tell me about Jesus. And he told me, Jesus is this. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is God in flesh. He said, how did that come? How do you know Jesus is God in flesh? He said, easy. He told me himself. He, he just kept appearing to me. And he told, he told me, I'm God. And believe in me supernatural. God is moving among Muslims. God is moving among, and talking about power. God is with us. That's why we should not be afraid. When you, when you see, you know, people, women will wail under faith. Don't be afraid of them. They are afraid of you. That's why they're behind that. <laughs> Do not let that separate you. Go with love and know that God is with you. We pray for people I'm not a miracle, miracle worker, but I pray for people. And Jesus does specials. He heals people. Miracles. Let, let's watch this uh, video. This uh, man calls from Tehran, and uh, let, let me share his experience with you. الان مداره کاش همش هست که گفتا سرطان داره سرطان ویه داره این بچه 
و ما هر جل رفتیم این بچه رو رد کردن بعد دیگه چیز شد که ما این بچه رو عمل کنیم بعد روزی که ما مقاطع بریم عملش کنیم من رفتم همه زیر آب سرد و گیریه و زاری و دست به دامن ایسای مسیح شدم امین. و ایسای مسیح حتی این یه نور اومد پیش من چه فرد و بالای زیبایی و چه رو روز روشنی که الان من با صحبت هستم بخت کنم با گیریه کنم و به من گفت چه داره دوستم جریان بچه من اینه و به من گفت که بچه دو من شفا میدم و بچه من رو شفا داد بعد ما وقت اومدیم از همام بیرون دیرم حالا من گفت چرا کجا بوده ای تو گفتم من همام بودم گفت تو هشت و نه ساعت پیش رفت همام گفتم نه من نیم ساعت رفتم گفت نه نه گفت من نزده که نه ساعت همام بودم و با ایسای مسیح داشتم صحبت میکردم و ایشون واقعا بچه من رو شفا داد تمام مدارکاش الان هست و از از خواستین باردون فرق کنم که ببینید که این ملت خدا ایمان بیارن اصلا به ایسای مسیح شما انجیل رو دارید بردر از زن انجیل رو دارید در خونه کتاب رو دارید کتاب مقدس رو در خانه من ندارم کتاب مقدس رو ولی ایسای مسیح ها من ایمان بهش رو بردم و بچه من رو شفا داد من خود ایسای مسیح ها دیدم نور دیدم اصلا یه چیزی من نمیتونم بگم کتاب مقدس سعی میکنیم برای تون تحییه میخواین این شماره تلفن همون میدم بله ارزه بدیم من شما رو روی بله بله تلفن رو نگه دارید خوشحال میشیم که تلفنتون رو در پشت آمین this is this is our lord miracles was a couple of weeks ago somebody had called and I was talking to him he said you know I Jesus healed me of my cancer and then I went I prayed for so and so and leukemia was canceled uh, was healed uh, and all that and he said really 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 he said past hormones why are you so excited this is normal have you read your Bible have you read your book of Acts have you why <laughs> this is normal and it should happen why should be not be afraid love and power because Jesus is with us I encourage you when you witness to Muslims be brave to say what is it that you're facing that's impossible in your life right now and let me pray for it in the name of Jesus and many many times Jesus comes through and even if he doesn't do the miracle they still appreciate that you love them enough to pray for them I mean you're not it's a win-win situation but many times that's when the miracles happen be bold Jesus is with us. Jesus is appearing to them. Don't you think we should join? Jesus, somebody is uh, telling me, you know, um, with, after September 11, he said, uh, I'm struggling. Fear and hatred just comes I, against Muslims. Uh, why should I sh share the gospel with Muslims? I said, well, you know, let me give you several reasons. One, because Jesus commanded us to share the gospel with all nations. He loved them all. He wants all to come to Christ. And 1.3 billion Muslims, he won't come back until they have heard the gospel. So obey him. Number two, love him because Jesus is loving them. He, he's appearing to them. Don't you think we should join him? Just look at them. When you look at Muslims, please remember slavery. When you read the slavery in Egypt, it's, that was physical and spiritual. But in Islamic countries, you can see spiritual slavery. Just imagine living or being born into a religion in a country that legally you have to follow that religion by law you're a muslim and you have no choice and you're slave to that spirit and to that religion and if you want to change your religion you're breaking the law you go to jail you get punished if you question that religion you're breaking the law isn't that the slavery didn't jesus come to set the captives free Shouldn't we have at least compassion for those who are in slavery and in bondages? We have to have passion for the Muslim. And Jesus, that's why he's appearing to them. And he's got, Jesus is saying, come join me. I'm doing it. Come and join me. I said, are you convinced? And he was, he was just thinking. I said, well, let me give you a third reason that you should share the gospel. If you don't share the gospel with Muslims, they will kill you. How, how is that? <laughs> Wow. 
we got to do it. <laughs> this is the time, the end time re- events. With end time events come end time harvest. Do you believe that? I remember uh, a man called and he was, uh, he said, he called one of our counselors. He said, you know, um, I've come to Christ several months ago, and I, but my, my friend is dying in the hospital. Would you, I'm going to go there. They have asked his friends and family members to come because he's in coma and he's dying. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to the hospital. Would you pray for him? I will take my cell phone. Okay. The counselor said yes. He, took, uh, he went to the hospital, said, my friend is here in coma, and here's my cell phone. Would you pray for him? Okay. Put the phone in his ears and pray, uh, and our counselor, you know, prays for healing, and and, uh, and the, the, the person will be healed and rise and, and uh, be a witness to Christ. So he said, okay, did you pray? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Any change? No, no, no change. Okay, thank you. Bye. And about 15, 20 minutes uh, later, he, uh, our counselor gets another call. And he, he answers, and there is, there is a commotion in the background. People were cr- uh, shouting. So what's happening? Well, this man who was in coma, now he's walking. He, he's got up, he's walking. I mean, he's well enough. And he says, I saw Jesus, and Jesus has healed me. I saw, when I, when I was coma, I just see Jesus coming and lift me up and heal me. And everybody's shouting, praise Jesus. I said, okay, now he, he, he hangs up. He hangs up, and another 15, 20 minutes, another phone call. And still, a lot of noise going in the background. So what's happening now? Well, uh, you know, other patients and their relatives, they f- found that this man was been healed, and they, they have come, they've attacked him, and they've t- taken pieces of his shirts, uh, uh, tore his shirt out uh, to go to the put on their patients. Maybe they will get healed. And now he's lost his shirt. He's fighting for his pants. Just to pray for him. He hangs up, and another 15, 20 minutes, there's a phone call. No, what, what's happening? Well, this half-naked man is walking on the streets, and there is a big crowd out, around him, and he's telling him that everybody, that Jesus has healed me. Jesus has healed me. Every, telling the whole town. Praise God. And that's not the end of story. He said, half hour later, half hour later, he called back. He said, what, what's happening now? He said, yeah, excuse me. We, are, we, are, we, are, we were all arrested because we... <laughs> We disturbed the peace in the city. We are all in the, uh, uh, you know, we, we, uh, at the police station, and the, the half-naked man is telling the police officer what has happened and how Jesus has, has healed him. <laughs> Nobody can deny Jesus. Nobody. He will do whatever he wants to do to save the nations. We need to join him. We need to be awakened. There are things happening around the world. There are open doors, open nations. Iran is an open nation, and God knows how open, how long it's going to stay open. But spiritually, Iran is open, and Jesus is moving. People hear the gospel. That's why we need to be bold. The power of God, the gospel of God, love of God is with us, and we're going to get results. And number three is sound mind. Sound mind is having the right strategy, thinking right. One of, the, one of the best ways to reach the close country, actually, I don't believe there is a, any close country. Maybe there are close Christians, but there are not close uh, co- countries. In Iran, did you know that in Iran, there is, it's illegal to own a satellite dish? But one of my friends sent me this, this picture. Yeah, I, I put it on, on internet. But originally it was sent to me by my friend. And he said, yeah, you know, these are law-abiding Iranian citizens, you know. <laughs> but with every satellite dish, you go to a, in a home of a family, and you can share the gospel. And that's what we're doing. And people are gathering around television and, and starting house churches. We help, we help uh, underground house churches to grow with um, many tools. Sound mind. Law power, sound mind. These are the times. The end times are coming. Events may happen very fast, but at the same time, there are going to be unique opportunities for reaching nations. And you say, ask of me, and I will give you nations. These are the times we need to ask of God. Give me Iran. Give me Lebanon. 
give me Saudi Arabia. These are the times. And the first one is Iran, most open Islamic nation. I want to invite you to pray. Thank Joel for allowing me to share. I pray that you will get involved. Get involved in supporting Israel, sharing the gospel with the Jews, blessing Israel and its neighbors through support Joshua Fon. I, this is time to get active. And also, I pray that you will join us to reach Iran. Iran is ready. The, what we can do is greater than what we are doing. Please pray for us. It's more than giving. It's more than praying. I invite you to get involved. Very specific, I want to share prayer requests with you. If you have uh, live television experience, I want you to come and join us. This, tool, this television tool is in our hand, but we are not using it the best we can. And we can do much more. If you have experience with uh, nonprofit organizations, leading them, managing them, come and talk to us. You can, you can join us. It's not just praying and, and giving. You can join us to change a nation. Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this time, for allowing me to share what you're doing. You be glorified. You talk to people's heart. You raise your children to be end-time Christians. Alert and active, Lord. Give us your heart for nations. Give us your heart for Israel. Give us your heart for Arabs and Muslims and Iranians, Lord God. We want to have the same heart. If we say we love you, we want to have your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Subscribe to our videos by clicking the subscribe button. You'll find some videos that we've chosen specifically for you. And if this is a ministry that you'd like to support financially, just make a tax deductible donation by clicking here to visit our giving page. Thank you. We look forward to partnering with you to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus.